prescription. Okay, it means uh, doesn't matter what you call it, Tai Chi, Qi Gong, whatever, or uh, sport medicine, uh, sport medicine, terminology, whatever you use. The idea is uh, all your design have to meet the requirement from what uh, insurance companies. If insurance companies don't accept it, then you don't make money. <laughs> you can get paid. So first, I'd like to introduce one of my assistants, uh, Christy uh, Shao. <clears throat> she has done research on this subject, and then she went to Harvard Medical School last year with me to introduce uh, this uh, topic too. So uh, Christy, please, please come and then start describing the uh, essential idea how you can design uh, your your exercise or chico movement to fulfill the needs uh, of uh, the issues requirements. Okay, Christy. Okay, hello everyone. I uh, hope you have a great day. Uh, firstly, I'm sharing my screen. Then I will start my presentation. Okay. So can you let me know if you are seeing or not seeing or any problem? Okay, and my sound is good, right? Okay, very nice. So today I'm gonna spend like 20 minutes to overview or go through uh, three CBD codes used by acupuncturist or um, occupational, uh, occupational or PT. <clears throat> so my part divided into three section. First one is I'm gonna uh, introduce those three codes. Secondly, uh, I am going to compare uh, this th uh, the difference between these three codes. Thirdly, uh, I will mention very uh, important one one important part called FITT. Uh, when you apply those uh, the three codes and the the exercise in your treatment. So first of all, if you can see from the PPT. The PowerPoint, I will explain the three CPD codes, which are 97110 and 97530 and 97112. Those are very commonly used, um, the code, uh, pro procedure code in the uh, treatment using the Taiji or Qigong. So firstly is uh, 97110. So let's uh, go through the e explanation of the uh, code. So 97110, it defines the therapy exercise to develop strength, endurance, range of motion, and flexibility. So those red highlighted words are the keywords to describe the, uh, the code, the characteristic. So when you are giving the treatment to a, a patient uh, and you want to uh, claim or you want to claim or bill the code to the insurance company, you have to met, you have to meet the requirement of the of the code. So there are few uh, lines here. The first one is therapeutic procedure. It's a, a, a overview of these codes. Uh, <clears throat> second one is uh, typically it's one uh, deficit, the area. And uh, when you give the treatment, each unit is 15 minutes. You can longer than that, but you could not shorter than uh, the 15 minutes to uh, claim uh, from the insurance company means that you have to finish like uh, 15 minutes the treatment for this code. 
So the fourth one is therapeutic uh, exercise to develop strength, endurance, range of motion, and flexibility, which are kind of same as the, the uh -huh. explanation we just saw. So the last one is direct one-on-one -on -one therapeutic exercise are provided, means only you and your 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 patients. You cannot doing the treatment uh, to two patients at the same time. So be below here, you can see a resource. So uh, there are many the art, uh, the articles and the introduction uh, to the code. So you can search online as well. So when a, a acupuncturist or a PT, they want to use this code. So what uh, typical the issues uh, they can apply. So one first one, as we know, that is muscle weakness. Second is stiffness. Third one, as the, the explanation said, is decrease in the flexibility, range of motion, strength, and endurance are pretty common uh, used deficit the, the areas. So it means that if you are um, having those patients who have the problems listed here uh, and you give the treatment so you may claim this code to uh, your in your insurance company okay the next one we are going to see is uh, some examples the typical the examples uh, for the patients who has problem and come to your clinic or to the hospital uh, who are searching for the help. So the first uh, example is a patient presents after repair of torn reto uh, rotator cuff. Okay, the problem on the, the shoulder. And this problem results in a decreased functional use of the arm and the shoulder. So you can imagine that the patient has the problem basically on the shoulder part and uh, uh, this decreased function affect his life okay the daily life and the daily function second typical example is a patient lacks of strength and mobility performing the activity of daily living for example like bathing dressing feeding or a range of other functional the activities. So basically, the if a patient um, he has problem uh, for like resulting uh, a decrease in his uh, the daily life, yeah, you can use this code after you treat um, the patient. So the next one is uh, when you can use this CPD code. Uh, when you claim the insurance to the patients in the in the insurance company. So here the first one, when you are working with the patients to complete sets of specially designed exercise that can restore the strength, endurance, range of motion, and the flexibility. And the second one is help the patient to build the strength or endurance to support the patient return to a normal the functioning. So this code, you can see that is basically focused on the, the uh, kind of a function of a patient. Okay, here gives you a few examples of exercise you can do with a patient uh, who has functional the problem and you can claim this 97110 code to the insurance company. The first one you can do is free weights to increase the strength, the arm or leg or any parts of the body if the patients can bear. Second one <clears throat> is walking on the treadmill. Yeah, it's a very common one. Third one is overhead stretch with some uh, uh, small device or, uh, or equ uh, equipment to increase the range of motion. Uh, the third one is for a stroke. Some patients uh, lose or um, they lack the strength or function in part of the 
uh, the body. Okay. So the next one here gives you a photo example for the shoulder part, because if you are running a clinic, you will see many patients, they have shoulder and the lower back, the problem. So here gives you some exercise, 10 exercise, you can help the uh, patients to improve the strength, the shoulder part range of motion. Yeah, flexibility, those kind of uh, pro the problem. Okay, let's go into the next code, which is 97530. Okay. So the same here is first one is explanation. So this code defines the therapeutic activities, direct patient contact means one, 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 and one, and face to face by the provider and the use of dynamic activities <clears throat> to improve the function performance. So the same here, each code, um, you have to spend at least 15 minutes along with the patient. <clears throat> so the care components are, um, it's a therapeutic procedure and the one-on-one, -on -one, you have to face your patient one-on-one. -on -one. You cannot treat two patients at the same time. Third characteristic is dynamic activity and each uh, treatment have to, uh, have to be at least 15 minutes. So you can use a, a broad range of uh, rehabilitative, the technicals, and improve functional performance, and it typically incorporates two or more deficiencies uh, deficits area. So the first one called you remember it's uh, basically it's one deficit the area. <clears throat> so here give you an uh, example like when you can use the CPD code nine seven five three zero. Um, so when you are working with the patient to complete sets of specially designed dynamic activity, so those uh, highlighted red words uh, basically reminds you uh, what is the difference between the other codes. So here uh, you have to improve the loss of restrictions in mobility, strength, balance, and the coordinations. So uh, it's uh, you would say like it's more complicated than the first code. So second line is provide very specific training for the activities of daily life that has been compromised. And uh, the third one is a, is a therapy session, uh, which addresses multiple deficits through uh, the participation in a functional the activity. So compared to the first code, uh, the 97530, you have to give uh, more dynamic and more design and more uh, complicated the activities to help a patient to restore the, the function. So here give you uh, some examples um, which you uh, when you treat a patient and you want to claim this code. So the first one is uh, a kind of transfer training like the bad mobility training, dynamic standing activities, mm -hmm. So it's uh, more complicated, uh, um, the symptoms. Okay, like throwing, catching, fine motor, uh, gross motor kind of things. And uh, those decreased functional uh, problem kind of uh, infect um, a patient's real life. So you can see the second line, it's a real life skills, like transferring from a chair to a bed. Um, the third one is bending, lifting, carrying, reaching, catching, those uh, um, activities which involve like the more muscles or more parts in the body to improve the functional performance. Okay, so the next one, since we have gone through the uh, two codes, so let's compare what is the difference between these two codes. So 
some of the um, uh, therapist or acupuncturist, you can use those two codes pro properly. So the first one, nine one one uh nine seven one one zero. So both of the two codes are therapeutic exercise. And uh, the next one, nine seven five three zero is uh, therapeutic activities. So it requires the second one requires more involvement and a more specific design. So the goals are different. The first one is build strength or uh, endurance to support a return to a normal function. The second one is uh, uh, improve the function like loss or restrictions in mobility, strength, balance, and coordination. The Regarding the def uh, deficit area involved, the first one is one, basically is one area. The second one, second code involves two or more deficit, uh, the area over the body. <clears throat> so the last part we are going to compare is body parts involved. The first one is some parts of the body. So the second one, 97530, it's, uh, emphasize on the movement of the entire body. So it means that as uh, from the explanation of those two codes, you would say uh, the second code requires specifically dynamic the activities. So let's come to the third code, 97112. Let's see the explanation first. It's again, the therapeutic procedure and one or more of the area and it requires at least 15 minutes. And here gives the, uh, the emphasis on the neuromuscular re-education of the movement, balance, coordination, kinesthetic sense, the, post the posture, uh, peripheral uh, section for sitting or the standing, the activities. So this code covers like more uh, the air more areas. So let's see uh, neuro neuromuscular di disease. So the meaning is the neuromuscular disease affect the function of muscle due to problems with nerves and the muscles in your body. And the most common sign of this disease is muscle the weakness. So the treatment uh, uh, purpose of this code 97112 is the type of the treatment is designed to improve the limitation or the defeats over a reasonable period through the clinical skills and the service. It's not like uh, you give the treatment for a long time. So uh, you help the patient to retreat, re restore functional balance, motor uh, coordination, kinesthetic sense, posture, and uh, proprial perception for sitting, standing, those activities, and uh, increase the communication between the brain and the muscles experiencing the issues. Here's uh, some examples of using this code. Um, you would say uh, it's like lifting weights from the floor in, fr uh, in front of the legs or overhead uh, using the both right and the left arms to improve uh, the joint mobility or a gym bell, a gym ball, the exercise used for improving the balance um, or a proper uh, proprioceptive neuromuscular uh, facilitation. Uh, those kind of things. So the last part I would mention is uh, the FITT principle during uh, the treatment. So um, as you can see from this PowerPoint, um, it's very important to keep in mind like each patient's uh, well-being goal will be different based on age, sex, or current fitness level like the body condition and available the, re the resource. So this FITT principle is kind of a, a, guide, a general the guideline for what should be included 
in your treatment plan. Um, so F means uh, the frequency. Do some type of physical activities every day. Yeah, as you, you can, as you see, you go to the PT, they ask you to do some uh, the exercise to maintain um, the functional uh, at home. I means intensity. Uh, it means choose an activity that is at least moderate in the intensive, vigorous activities uh, kind of things. T means time, how long, duration, plan on a total time, 15 minutes or 30 minutes. Type means uh, the, what type of activities you are going to choose. So this is a, a basic uh, general guidelines for your design of the uh, activities of move, um, the movement in your treatment. So the final part is the summary. So today we we going through we are going through the uh, most commonly used safety codes, uh, three codes, in the acupuncturist or physicians or occupationals, uh, where we can use these uh, three codes to uh, as a a, a standardized uh, guideline. So. Um, the next one is the treatment law is FTA ITT guideline or the print or the principles. Uh, so in the next seminar, I think um, we will introduce more the billion and the examples, uh, practical uh, e examples in your clinic treatment. Okay, I'm done with my uh, introduction. Thank you for listening. Um, I will give back the camera to Dr. Wong. Thank you so much. Yeah, Christy is in the program of graduate study of Chinese medicine, and she's been uh, doing a lot of research, especially that this kind of code to help them have a, a kind of focus. How can they treat patients with integrated medicine or sports or all kind of you know method that you don't need any medicine, you know, medicine or even acupuncture? So that is a very is what we're gonna to try to do is learn the qigong tai chi activity to avoid uh, taking pills or uh, being treated with with needle, right? <laughs> but uh Let's get back to this uh, the topic. When you talk about Tai Chi Qigong, use it in therapy, then you might ask, what is Tai Chi? Is tai Chi means all the first form, the Tai Chi movement that you use uh, to treat patients. And uh, what is Qigong? What is the limitation of Qigong? Then I think we can have a conclusion that Tai Chi is not just a movement form. Tai Chi is a philosophy. Tai Chi is a, a kind of a traditional Chinese uh, a metaphysical law that tell you everything in this universe consists of two forces in the yang and then they interacting together and never separate. So there's always what? Something you do always one negative, one positive side going on. So from here, you can see all the movements Fast, slow is Tai Chi, in and yang, okay? And so is aggressive, passive, all kinds of examples. Now, when you apply this concept to medicine, then you can see anything you apply to the patient, make it work hard or make it relax, this is in and yang. And that depends on your diagnosis and what kind of uh, type of exercise you design. So we can make them actually together to say that Tai Chi is the principle of control your energy, all right? And the qigong is energy. So when you, you are doing some exercise, there's always a qigong in it, okay? Just like uh, when we look at uh, the water, you know the chemical mode of water is H2O, right? It's, it could be seen, you know, flowing water, kind of very gentle and it's the, and 
you don't see it anymore, but it's still somewhere in the air. So they are still same content. And if the temperature drop, you know, all the way down, then it can be turned into ice. Then it is stationary, immobile, and it's a what? Hot, and it's released a lot of power. That's ice. So they're all same content, but they are what? In different form. So Qigong, you can see that all kind of people doing so-called training the ability to break breeze or to be able to resist all kind of attack. That's called hard Qigong. And then you see people do a Zen, you know, meditation or do medical exercise. That is a control your energy inside. It's called what? Internal Qigong, also sub Qigong, right? So you can see the two different ways to, to, to manage your energy. And then when you are trying to design some activity to treat people, you have to remember, it's not the particular way uh, to follow when you do uh, the design. It is a follow up. Just what you just heard from uh, Christy, the requirement for the medical code, they want you to help people uh, to take care of their problem. And the first is treatment, then is what? Motor learning to learn how to use their body more effectively and then improve their uh, function step by step. So you have to depend on the need to design the prescription. And then qi gong, including what? Your attention, meditating, right? You had to think about it. When you qi breathing, follow your mind, that's called yi qi xing, uh, yi qi xing li. The qi, yi mind, yi, qi li, the three essence. One is your mind, attention. Qi is your breathing, the energy. And di is your movement. Some, some qi gong is stationary, like a zen, okay, stand, standing postures, meditating. That stationary qi gong did not really emphasize in the qi li, the, the movement, but it's emphasized by the combination of your mind, your intention, and your breath control. But if you add the di, the force, that means you need move your muscle, move your joint. Then the, you have three, e chi di, three. We, we know that in Qigong, these are three regulations you have to do to make it a, a Qigong. E, and the, and the attention, your mind, and hard. your breathing control, mm. and your movement. So if you design something, exercise to help patient, you have to think about, you teach patient, patient to use the mind to lead their breathing control and to what to reach to reach to uh, to the joint or to the sure. muscle or to the mind to help them solve the problem. So what I'm trying to emphasize is that it's not a particular movement that you can use for all kind of patients. It is what it is you design the take the movement, how to use like these three combination to help the patient to solve the problem. And there are all kind of uh, uh, patterns or set of exercise to help people for particular uh, problems. And uh, today, I think we can use a, a simple ones to get everybody for you, how you can combine your attention, your breathing control, and your movement, you know, in agreement. Okay, this this time I want to introduce one exercise. It's called uh, the combing hair reaching joint. Okay, when you do the combing hair, you are using your finger like a, a comb. To what? To brush along your hair. That means what? Your head and your face, your neck. That's your center line. So when you make your hand, follow your head and your face and then, and then move it around, that you you are making your whole joint from shoulder to elbow to wrist to finger work together as you want it to be. And then when you also um, move more extensionally, extensively, then the, you, you want to include your waist. So if you are helping a patient who is sitting on a chair, on a wheelchair, and they have a neck problem or shoulder problem or upper back problem, then you can teach them breathing their chi up when they raise iron. Okay? When you bring your chi up, it's like a balloon. When your chi comes up, it's expanding. So your posture will be what? Going up or, or wide open. 
And here you see ascending, uh, uh, ascending and then descending, coming down. So raise your hand, breathe in, and then going down, brush, brush down, breathe out, exhale. So this easy one, right? Every day you comb your hair this way. And watch that fingers touch your face, touch your hair, and touch your neck, and the neck inside. So that means what? Your hand is uh, traveling along your spine. Yes, this session. And then when you want to go the force wrench, then you go this way. Look. Your back hand, you need a what? You need shoulder to rotation and then your palm face in. So the hand, back hand can reach your neck and then touch your, your chin and then up by your face and go up and then turn your to your palm and then go up. Now, and then rotate your, your wrist. Okay, watch this. Rotate your wrist. Here, when you get here, right? Rotate your wrist and then comb here, coming down. And then you will see my shoulder. My shoulder is what? Rotating 300 degree, going up, and then going down 300 degree, going down. You get it? You try to see your two elbow bent, then you use your shoulder, drop elbow, raise your elbow, and rotate back. Okay, that's one way, right? And the other way, raise your elbow, and then circle to the front, and then circle your shoulder, and then coming down. So that's easy to tell that you are moving your shoulder 300 degree, 60 degree, re reverse, right? And then you extend your hand, including your finger, then your whole chi will come up from your torso through your shoulder, elbow, wrist to the fingertip. And that way you can feel the chi is releasing from your palm and through your fingers. All right? Now, let's do, today, just do an easy one. Both hands. Uh, it's on the, now we'll just get, this way. Now, two hand. When your hand come up, breathe in. When you breathe in and out from the center gravity, which is about four fingers below navel, thumb tip. Okay, that's a very important area to control your movement. Yeah, your cheek oh, through the air, through the your nose, hanging, mouth closed through your nose, slowly breathing down to your thumb tip. In the meantime, your hand will raise up. Breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. Okay, any height. You're gonna finish your, your movement where you, you know, take the air in. So if you want to raise your arm high, very high, you need to move your arm faster than your shoulder in your the, the wrist. You dig it? You get the same speed, you cannot get the complete, you know, breathing in uh, done before the hand go to high. So the head travel faster than the body. And then when you're coming down, faster than the body going down. So your body come up, breathe in, and breathe out. Now when you do this one, you're not just showing that you are changing your shape, but also you are leading the energy from your waist through your joint, okay, diaphragm, cage, ribs, and shoulder, and elbow, wrist, finger, going up gradually. And then when you're coming down, you don't come down from here, okay? You come down from what? From lowering down your head. And then you pull your diaphragm down, your shoulder, your, your, your cage breathing, closed, and the shoulder closed, and the arm drop down. So by doing this simple motion, breathe in and breathe out, you feel that your whole body is what? Is, is follow your breathing, up and down only, only up and down. The number one is learn this principle. When your body is opening, raising, it's time to breathe, expanding and then, and then flow up. And then when you're dropping down, don't, don't drop down from hand, drop down your center. So you can roll down your hip. When you roll down your hip, your knee automatically will be loose and then bent. And then keep your body straight and then go down, hip, 
and the shoulder, elbow, wrist, finger. All right. So breathe in, breathe out. Now, your attention, your eye will follow the center of your two arms. Here, breathe in, look, two arms. That's your target. You go down. That means your, your attention go with your, your movement and your breath is in agreement with your motion. So then you achieve the three regulation. Your mind, intention, and your breath control, and your movement. So the speed of your movement, the power you use, and also speed of your breathing, and your attention, all involved. And easy to tell is from your eyesight. If your eyes is looking somewhere not, without following your head, that means your attention did not combine with your movement, okay? Now, that's only basic. Now we do the real one. Is you raise your arm up, breathe in, and going down, right? Without, watch my finger. My finger is what? Is going gradually, gradually, push my palm down, but never do this way, this way, okay? It's come down gradually, gradually, gradually. Uh, the, but this way, you can feel that your chi is flowing out through along your arm to the fingertip, okay? So when you, you push somewhere uh, without locking your joint, you can feel the chi is going out, release from your palm, okay? Now, you are going to comb your hair. Comb your hair, when, without controlling your breathing, uh, you do like this, right? Comb your hair. Now you want to do a drill. So you breathe in, the chi is arriving at your finger, right? Then you're going down, then this hand will come from behind. Watch. Turn your palm here. The finger go like this. Then brush down and raise your elbow and then look at this. Lock your chin and beat together and going down. And then after you go down, they will meet behind your low back. All right? So from here, breathe in, breathe out. Here. So during this process, you control the speed of your arm motion and your chi from your movement, your chi follow. Breathe in and breathe out. Now you notice that when I do the motion, it's not my hand only, it's my whole body. Uh, I use my waist, push my diaphragm up, shoulder up, arm up. When I go down, I raise my elbow and then I push my hand down by the elbow, shoulder, and what? And bend my neck to here and then meet here. The simple motion, if you practice right, you can feel you're driving your chi coming up and going down, and the way you do that, you can you can you can tell that your shoulder is what rotating, uh, rotating here and then going up. Uh, so this is going down, down, and then from behind coming up will be what will be coming here meet and then going up, and then all the way up and then going down and then here going down. Okay. So simple exercise, your body, yeah, your body is driving your chi going up with your hand raising up and then your body is pulling your chi down by lower down your hand and the two direction. When you're going up, you're from here. You're going up here, going down from behind and then meet here. So coming up from the front and then make sure that you rotate your your shoulder so so hard that it's mid right center and then touch closely, closely. Look at that. Don't do this way. Uh, you do this and then stretch fully. Then you can feel your whole body extended, yeah, full scale. Okay? There are three directions. One is a up and down two hand. One is a one, one hand each side. To the left, one time. Yeah. To the right, one time. Okay, that's different direction, but always up and down. And then there are also uh, different postures. 
to turn your legs and worship him. So this set of exercises called Kome Heo, Reaching Joint, was used in Qing Dynasty by a master called Wu Tipang, Master Wu. Uh, he taught at the Central Kung Fu Academy, the official academy martial in China, 1920s, okay? He taught a student, uh, Master Li, Li Qinghan, who was the first uh, director of a Qigong committee in Taiwan. He immigrated to uh, El Salvador and he became the acupuncture doctor to the royal family. And then he also applied medicine. And because he know all the Qigong and he treat a lot of people with many, you know, acupuncture, acupuncture and the Qigong exercise, very welcome, very popular. Even he was invited to treat the, the former president of El Salvador. Okay, he, Master D, Ching Han, was my senior fraternity brother. Uh, he already passed away, yeah. But I started with him, and then since he's been practicing uh, Chinese medicine for at least 60 years, okay, he passed away about 92. So he's saved a lot of people's problems. Now, I found out this is very good. Everybody can use this exercise to learn the Qigong, more like about well, the uh, principles and the basic exercise, basic technique. Because the, once you understand this, you design some technique for people who, who get a problem with the shoulder or low back or stress, you can use this same easy idea, design something. This is easy, right? Easy, but it forces you to uh, to conduct the whole movement from your center, your waist, and every joint is already uh, involved, every movement. So that's, that's exactly the Tai Chi uh, principle tell, tell you. Use your waist as a commander of the whole body, each movement. And then one joint move, the whole body has to move. So you have to move as a body, one unit, rather than uh, move my hand, and then the rest of the body is not involved. So this is the way that how you can make the Qigong exercise uh, become effective. So there are a different kind of a design, but they're all based on this simple principle. Okay, so I will first try to make you upright and then center your energy to send to the Dantian. Then lose your shoulder and the chin, don't tuck your chin. I look straight for keep your body upright. And then your feet, you can start with what? Shoulder with the part, with your feet uh, parallel to each other, toe. And then you're going to start from what? Lowing down. When you're going down, you exhale. Exhale. When you're coming up, you inhale. So far, you only use your waist to have your hip low down and your, your, your knee relaxed and the bending. Keep your back straight. Exhale, exhale, exhale. And then when you can not low, go and lower, coming up, or again, now push your pelvis up when you uh, push your dive up and then open your uh, bridge cage. You know? Here, breathe in. And then going down, hit, going down. So if you do that, you can learn how to use your tantan to control your movement, okay? And then from there, extend to your shoulder, elbow, finger, and finally what? Do all kind of variety of movements as we just did, all right? So you mean two arm, one arm, yeah, okay? You can do all kind of these movements to experience how your movement and your, your brain control and your mind work together to achieve what Qigong is for. That is what make your movement uh, effective in treating people or to use it for uh, any other purposes, such as like, uh, uh, protect yourself in fighting uh, or in attacking, okay? All right, so today I think it's important that we classify that Tai Chi, Qigong, they are not separable. The, the Qigong can be in any form, but Tai Chi is always there to regulate the Qigong. If you don't have a Tai Chi principle, then your Qigong is not complete. That's very important. 
So don't be misled by all kind of uh, name of a Qigong and then all kind of form. It's the same principle. As long as you are li alive, there's a Qi in your body. That's because you're still alive. Okay, even you're sleeping, your Qi is inside your mind, your nerves, it's going on. And then by yourself, you can try to practice as the one we said, use your center to try your Qi and your force from the center to the limb, to the fingertip. And then waving your arm side to side, oh, back and forth, okay? Oh, up and down, yeah, oh, corner to corner, but all the movement, it's all same, show the same. Okay, so uh, uh, this will give you a little bit, you know, I think initial uh, uh, habit of doing the Qigong in the right way. And they are all under the Tai Chi. Now, with the, today's uh, uh, information, the code, medical code that required by insurance company, when you try to design therapeutic Qigong Tai Chi, you have some kind of guideline, all right? And then FITT is the Western uh, fitness uh, common in our principles. In Chinese Qigong, they have a sixth guideline, okay? Now I just name one time to you. It's called uh, three internally, you know, you have to uh, achieve. One is what? Song Jing Zi, means what? Relax and uh, tranquil and be natural when you start practice Qigong. Number two is called what? It's called Yi Xi Xiang Shui. It means your mind, the Qi energy, they always work together. Okay, side by side. So even you do stationary or moving many qigong, qigong, you have to accomplish that. The number three is called what? Keep your body what? Upper body light, lower body heavy. It said, sang qing xia zhong. So your energy will be first started from below. So that's why I ask you to uh, low down first and then folding up uh, so that you are learning how to control your energy up and down by first release the air and then absorbing when you come up. And then the last two, uh, that's three. One is what? Ho Ho Shi Du means what? control the intensity and the time involved in training. Okay? Like cooking. The Ho Ho means uh, when you cook, you watch how big a fire and how long you cook. So that means intensity and the uh, length of time. And then the next one is called Xun Xu Jian Jin means uh, you always do progressively uh, improvement on uh, teaching or learning. Don't jump in uh, any uh, not not reasonable uh, uh, schedule. Just go slowly, going up and going down slowly. Everything has to be continuity. Finally, it said what holistic approach. Yeah, that's that's a little bit different from the Western four guideline. Western four like uh, guideline have something that different Chinese is the last one called uh, the type of exercise. You design exercise according to your diagnosis or the need of a, of a student. When the Chinese have one that's that similar to that is that you watch your control intensity and the frequency and also what uh, uh, the progressive manner. So they are all kind of a, a compensate or make up for each other. And then you put it all together, then you got a complete picture. Okay, uh, hopefully that will give you a little bit idea about Qigong Tai Chi for uh, kind of a beginning level. And then there'll be more uh, uh, information coming up after my lecture here. Next one, you'll be uh, seeing that the, uh, Professor Frank Fong from UC Berkeley to introduce Tai Chi for dealing with arthritis and all kinds of different symptoms. Okay, thank you. And uh, uh, in a few minutes, uh, Professor Wang will come up.